Satan shoes. All right, let's talk. Let's talk about the Satan shoes. And a rapper, singer that I'd never heard of, I mean, maybe I'm showing my age, but until a few weeks ago, I'd never heard of Lil Nas. But apparently Lil Nas, or is it Lil Nas X? I see an X after his name. Uh, makes available Satan shoes. Now, these are Nike Air Max 97 shoes. And without the permission of Nike, Lil Nas decides to make available 666 pair of Satan shoes. Uh, they have a bronze pentagram. There's an inverted cross on them. And apparently the shoes contained a drop of real human blood. I didn't see exactly whose blood this might be. But, uh, you know, obviously the evangelicals lost their minds, right? Conservative Christianity did what conservative Christianity does, and they just freak out and totally lose their shit, which shows you how easily provoked they are. Uh, Nike has uh, sued them. There's, I guess, a temporary injunction, a halt to the sale of the shoes for trademark infringement. I get that, right? They, you know, Nike should have proprietary rights over their own logo. And so, uh, you know, Lil Nas has said, okay, fine, for now, we're not going to produce any more. But uh, the freak out continues. And so, obviously, with this satanic imagery and a video that we're going to talk about that shows the devil and devil horns and the, you know, the depths of Hades, I thought about my buddy Lucian Greaves. And I thought, well, I'll bet everybody's tapping him on the shoulder wanting to talk about, you know, Satan. I mean, I don't know. We just make that connection, Lucian, right? We're like, oh, look, it's the devil. We should see what Lucian thinks. And this happens often. And you didn't say anything. Like, you didn't post anything. You didn't have any commentary. And I'm curious as to why. Like, why the silence, at least initially? Yeah, I got a bunch of interview requests right away. The first people to reach out were Rolling Stone. And they wanted to know first what I thought of the Little Nas X video, Montero, which came out at the same time he released the shoes. It's a music video in which he gives a homoerotic lap dance to Satan. And I think this really kicked off the outrage and controversy. Homoeroticism and Satan uh, really gets the, uh, the conservative right really worked up. And they were worked up over this. And the media was really eager to sustain the outrage and come up with uh, more upon which to keep the, uh, get, keep the controversy alive. And I think they were hoping I would have some... Uh, really uh, inflammatory things to say, either in outrage against the video, not properly representing Satanism or whatever they were looking for there. And there were some leading questions in that regard, of course, when I started doing interviews later, or uh, embracing the video and doing more to say things that would uh, piss off the evangelicals or, or whatever. In any case, they're, they're always looking to keep the fight alive and the controversy uh, uh the propagating and, and 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 do more to fuel the flames and i just was not interested in it i i i also was not aware of the artist or the artist's work it did so happen that as soon as the video came out about an hour after it posted a friend of mine texted it to me and i watched it and i could tell that this wasn't a uh this wasn't a low budget video. You know, this guy must be uh, a famous pop star, uh, unpronounced to me. You know, there, there was a lot of, they, they obviously threw a lot of money into this one music video, but I didn't find the imagery uh, terribly unique or uh, really, really that, that thought provoking to me. Uh, ever since we've been children, we've been seeing, you know, little devils whispering. Uh, messages into somebody's ears in cartoons or whatever. And the, the image of a red-skinned, horned, tailed devil isn't entirely uh, unknown to us. So we all recognize it as, as immediately as we recognize Mickey Mouse or whatever else. It's just very prevalently available artistic raw material for anybody. And that was part of the reason I thought, I really didn't have a place to give commentary on it. I couldn't openly embrace it as being uh, a portrayal of Satanism because I don't know that that was what the artist intended it to be. For all I knew, he could come out with a statement saying that he felt enslaved by his homosexuality or something and that he was trying to defeat the devil and that he was looking to become a, a recovered homosexual in the, uh, 
in, in the evangelical school or something. Um, later on, he made some statements that were more clarifying, but it, immediately I wasn't sure what he was trying to convey, and it wasn't my place to state the artist's intentions, nor was it my place to claim some kind of proprietary rights over this imagery. I mean, you and I are way ahead of this. Our audiences are way ahead of this. We know controversy sells. I can already hear the whispers of the marketing departments going, hey, check this out. We're going to get so much free press. We're going to sell so many copies of the album or the single or whatever. I mean, 50 million streams on Spotify in one week, rocketing to the top of the Billboard Top 100. I mean, I remember back when, uh, you know, Ozzy Osbourne Diary of a Madman's album cover, which t today seems like a freaking cartoon. Back then, you know, parents are setting it on fire because it's imbued with demons, you know, and they're forbidding their children to be anywhere near any sort of Ozzy Osbourne stuff. Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, the toys that we were playing with. Star Wars was imbued with some sort of a new age thing, right? The Force is... A part of a satanic spiritual thing, blah, blah, blah. This has been going on for decades. And so, you know, I was looking around at some of the people in my religious circle here in Oklahoma as they totally lose their shit about how, well, how the world's going to hell in a handbasket. And this is the latest piece of evidence. And I'm like, do you not remember the 80s? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, have you gotten into any of that, right? You're like, this is not, there is nothing new under the sun, right, Lucian? You're right. Uh, I mean, there is the question of why is there this outsized reaction? Is that indicative of a broader satanic panic? But it, it really did start bothering me when I was seeing satanic panic invoked so much to describe the controversy over the Little Nas X video. And that's really what compelled me to write my Patreon piece, too, because when people, when academics use the term satanic panic, they're not merely talking about isolated flare-ups of outraged controversy over single products like a video or a pair of shoes. And they're not talking about the offense that somebody took to the representation of their religion or whatever else. They're talking about a much broader type of witch hunt in which people are generally being accused of crimes they never committed and they're invoking a conspiracy of Satanists that do not exist. And in the satanic panic of the 80s and 90s, which is what academics are really referring to when they say satanic panic, they're referring to a time frame spanned around 1980 to 1995, where people were being accused of heinous crimes connected with a non-existent Satanism, and some of them going to prison. That is a satanic panic. And it's important to me that people recognize what a satanic panic is, because I think a lot of people are still unclear how de damaging and devastating the satanic panic was, how close we are to a new satanic panic, and what kind of, in what kind of harm that can really do us. And I think if you're just looking at evangelicals who are pissed off that their religious dominance is being challenged or that there's blasphemous imageries, imagery out in pop culture, you're really missing the point and you're really leaving us vulnerable to another satanic panic. Because okay, well, let, let me make sure I understand you then. You're concerned that, I mean, if we call it a marketing stunt, artistic expression as he, and he's declared this, I think that uh, this is part of his liberation exercise over the shaming of religions against him, his identity, his sexuality, and if that's the case, good for him. But you're a little bit concerned that this sort of, um, I don't know, single dust-up might distract from or perhaps even misrepresent these false accusations of satanic ritual sacrifice, the imbuing of Satanism or superstitious thinking into law enforcement, psychology, etc. I mean... Without putting words in your mouth, have I put words in your mouth? Am I close? What do you think? Well, it's 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 close when you when you minimize something like this and you think of it as something as superfluous as just this kind of minor uproar that we can stand on the sidelines and laugh about. It doesn't really compel you much to fight back against it or push back. And I kind of feel like 
We've seen that a lot in the fight against the rise of Christian nationalism as well, even as they're changing legislation to, to fit their ends, even as they're, they're pushing, advancing bills to allow them the unique privilege to discriminate against people that they disagree with upon religious grounds uh, in order to discriminate against uh, non-believers, to discriminate against people based upon their sexual orientation or identity or whatever else. Uh, you still have people saying, well, this is the last gasp of Christian nationalism. They're, they're losing their, their pride of place within American politics. And we don't have to worry about this much longer. And that's it, and that kind of complacent attitude just lets them keep advancing further and further. And I feel that's similar to this under-recognition of what the satanic panic actually is and the harm that it can do. And to not recognize the people who were falsely accused, the people who went to prison, the full depth and breadth of that witch hunt that took place in modern times, in our lifetimes, is uh, to place us in danger of experiencing that very type of thing all over again. So I would like it if people, when people heard the term satanic panic, they, they, they felt more of that horror and revulsion of all those things I had talked about, rather than thinking of it as something that's, uh, you know, a very temporary thing that you can laugh off uh, because it's just uproar confined to a small group of people that nobody takes seriously anyways. I do find myself laughing, though. I mean, first of all, the hypocrisy, right? Our God is the most powerful God in the universe. Satan doesn't have a prayer, if you'll pardon the expression. Right? Satan is powerless against our all-powerful deity. And these same people spend their whole lives totally freaked out about the power of Satan, the influence right. of Satan. He's under every rock. He's in the closet. He's under their children's bed. He's in their books. He's in their music. He's in their films. He's in their culture. For people who are in one, in one breath, they say the battle's already won. Satan doesn't even have a shot. He is already defeated. You know, This is all just an academic exercise. And then in the next breath... They are losing their shit. And I, I find it funny. I don't know if you do or not. I find it funny to watch. I, that aspect of it is funny. When you just look at, like, the superstitious uproar that there's some kind of spiritual environment that is being irreparably corrupted and that children are going to be driven to marijuana and homosexuality and, and then they're never going to go to heaven because of it. But that's when you're isolating the satanic panic to evangelical uproar, superstitious uproar, and the horrifying truth about the satanic panic is it would have never taken off if it were just uh, a flare-up of the religious right being offended by satanic imagery. It's not what it was, and it took bipartisan support for bad ideas and pseudoscience for the satanic panic to really take off. And I know people are so politically polarized now that they don't like to admit to any fault on you know, within their political alignment. But the satanic panic wouldn't have been anything during the 80s and 90s if it weren't for anti-porn, sex-negative liberals also fighting this battle, claiming that any claim of abuse, no matter how absurd or how implausible, needed to be taken at face value and could not be questioned and this was, you know, and this came from those good intentions of realizing that claims of abuse have been under-recognized previously, but then, you know, went overbroad into this idea that no claim of abuse could be questioned to the point that when people in a therapeutic setting started recovering memories of being involved in intergenerational satanic cults, they felt it a point of obligation to take those claims at face value and accept them as absolute truth. And we're still at the point now where people who propagate these notions of the veracity of recovered memories and try to instigate a new real satanic panic will say that if you're questioning their narratives about satanic ritual abuse, Illuminati mind control, or other absurd things, that you're merely covering up 
against crimes of sexual abuse and human trafficking. And you can see with QAnon now that they understand this. They hijack that whole believe the children thing, and they try to paint themselves as merely soldiers in a war against child trafficking. And in the same way, if you question absurd QAnon conspiracy theories, you're probably going to be accused of being some kind of defender of child trafficking. And this has its roots earlier on in the satanic panic of the 80s and 90s. And that's where things get really dangerous. And that's when people start being afraid to speak up and call bullshit. When somebody attaches their bizarre notions to an unquestionably moral cause, and they begin to learn to conceal the absurdity of their conspiracist narratives. And that's what happened with people in the earlier satanic panic. There's an organization called the International Society for the Study of Trauma and Dissociation. And they're a professional organization for mental health professionals. And they put on annual conferences where they give out continuing education units to professionals. And in their conferences, they will talk about satanic ritual abuse. They will talk about Illuminati mind control. And they're still propagating these notions that there's a worldwide satanic conspiracy abusing people, brainwashing them in trying to initiate this one world order. It's it's very QAnon, but it's not as uh, politically right QAnon. It's, it's, it's more kind of politically neutral QAnon. But it, it, it precedes QAnon, and QAnon is kind of an evolution from it. And this, I think is where the real damage occurs. Uh, people who aren't already invested in being uh, some kind of uh, tribally identified Christian nationalist or whatever, aren't terribly affected by uh, the Christian nationalist uproar about a Little Nas X video. But when you get that kind of bipartisan coming together on some kind of common ground, which has them both feeling obligated to either not attack bad ideas and conspiracy theories or, uh, you know, in, in similarly just to uh, accept those conspiracy theories at face value due to, to uh, uh, the, the moral cause they're, they're advocating for. That, that's, that's all the makings of a satanic panic right there. And that's what I really want people to recognize is that the satanic panic uh, is not just merely a matter of superstitious religious people getting pissed off. It's finding some kind of common ground with a bunch of other people, of a bunch of other political identifications and beliefs, and uh, using that common ground to ignore science, ignore fact, promote pseudoscience, and advocate for bad ideas that cause real harm. This is a sticky one, isn't it, with uh, the Believe the Children aspect. I'm reminded of the McMartin trial, right? McMartin yeah, daycare yeah. trial back in the 80s. The most expensive trial up to that time in the United States. As there were, uh, I think it started with one child who had spun a wild story about Satanism or something. And then it sort of, uh, you know, before you knew it, you had all of these... Um, I don't know if they, they weren't even child psychologists, really, but they were sort of feeding these lines to the children. And then you've got the imagination going and now things spin out of control and ru lives are ruined, right? Lives were ruined a decade in the court system and it was just a nightmare. And, you know, believe the children in that moment, that was the first part of the statement. Like we need to listen to the children and take their initial accusation seriously, but then we need to vet those accusations. So when a child says, oh, they were sacrificing, you know, they were doing rituals in the basement, how hard is it to find out that there's no basement at the McMartin preschool, right? So I get your point, right? If, but if it's noble to say, believe the children, hashtag, and it sounds like you're an enabler of abuse, if you say, Let's take a second. Let's pause. That pause sounds like hesitation. Hesitation sounds like weakness, even complicity. And uh, we see some of that even among a lot of that, even among people on the left. I get that. So, Yeah, no, it, and that's part of my concern is now I think we're kind of in this environment, this environment, uh, this cultural environment spurred on, of course, by the way people communicate in social media 
where people keep going further and further into their isolated points of view and making more and more bombastic statements that get more and more uh, interactions and they become further and further removed from principle and soon uh, uh, questioning any aspect of what they're saying becomes a com- becomes a heresy and you can take a noble cause but at the point where you're not accepting anybody's uh, commentary about maybe what the best means to the ends are you know, to, to, to question even your tactics of getting to those ends that you, you claim you seek uh, become some kind of heresy, then I think you're really primed to find ourselves in a new panic where, you know, bad, bad techniques, bad ideas are being unquestioned because uh, people are more interested in signaling their, uh, their connectedness to a certain tribe rather than actually uh, pursuing facts or pursuing positive ends. All right. Well, if we're seeing the decline of religiosity in this country, then people are less and less religious, more and more secular, certainly disinterested in religion. How does that affect the whole satanic panic thing? How does that affect the, uh, the Christian nationalist? Obviously, you've done some thinking about this. What do you think? I don't know how much it really affects it. Uh, There was a lot of secularization of satanic panic during the 80s and 90s. And when you see Geraldo Rivera start up his his famous report on Satanism aired in like 89 or something like that, he did this whole expose where he was discussing a type of Satanism that just didn't even exist. But he, he was able to call together this whole mythology and put it out there as though we're this prevalent problem and causing for all these murders and disappearances and things like that. He started out with this preface that was saying, whether you believe in a Satan or not is irrelevant, but Satanism does exist, and this is what it means. And then he was attaching all these uh, anti-human activities and beliefs to it. So it didn't really necessarily require anybody's uh, religious belief. It just required their credulity. And I think that's, we're seeing a lot of credulity now. And if you look at the the numbers when it comes to people who are anti-vax, when you see how large the QAnon movement is, and when you see the proliferation of ideas that are facially absurd being taken as fact, uh, I think that's a real cause for concern, regardless of what the numbers are on dwindling church membership or identification. I stole one of your lines. You said something last time we talked about, uh, I think we were talking QAnon, and you used the phrase, irredeemably stupid. I've just borrowed that. Like, I'm using it all the time. That's just irredeemably stupid. We're surrounded by it. And so much of it is rooted in these superstitions, these weird magical ideas that everything is part of a a struggle between the dark and the light, you know, good and evil. Nothing is neutral. It is all part of uh, a precursor to Armageddon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, You know, and and, uh, I am seeing, I know the temperature is going up, even as the numbers of the evangelicals might be going down, they seem to become like the desperate wounded animal. They become even more dangerous in many ways. Would that be your opinion? Yeah, I think uh, the push in our lifetime with the Christian nationalists has been to get into politics. I think they they smelled uh, the demographic trends some time ago, uh, knew they were going to be on the uh, minority side, also knew they weren't going to get anywhere in the sciences. Um, so... They started training everybody to go into politics and really pushing hard to get their tribe into political office so that if the, even if they didn't have the numbers in the general population, they would have it in the legislative bodies and they'll be able to impose their will upon everybody else. And I think the ultimate hope is that with uh, godly direction coming from political higher offices, there will be a, a new great coming to Christ of the general population overall. Like if we just have the Ten Commandments 
posted everywhere, people will realize that abortion is bad and homosexuality is a disease and all these other uh, notions. I think I think they have that they will reclaim their place as the, the the dominant belief system, just so long as they push it upon everybody and make it mandatory that they subscribe to it, they'll find themselves willing participants shortly thereafter. But in the meantime, you know, we have to deal with them doing this. And if we don't, and if we don't fight back, they're going to make it. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of amazed that at this point, even after the Trump administration, I still see people kind of taking this uh, dismissive position about it. Like, uh, this is dwindling away. This is this is about to expire. Uh, we don't have to deal with the Christian nationalists much longer. Like, this is some kind of uh, transient phase that we'll be laughing off like the the uproar of the little Nas X video later on. And, you know, the little Nas X video could be an indication, a, a symptom of the, of a larger satanic panic really brewing. Um, but the Christian nationalists within the politics, that, that panic is present now. <laughs> this yeah. is something that, this is a clear and present danger and it's, it's working its destructive power in the moment. I mean, how screwed so, up is that? Like if Ted Cruz is determining the moral compass, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene is determining. It's just mad gets. I mean, it was just, it just, <laughs> I just fear for the species. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I had to ask, and you don't have to answer, but if you, have you take a personal position now that you've become more familiar with the little Nas X uh, video and the story and the imagery and the reasons for doing it and the response? I mean, have you spoken about your own personal opinion on it? I, I'm, I'm pretty neutral. I mean, it's not really my thing. You know, I, I, I thought the uh, the video was amusing to watch. Like, I, it was really well done, right? I, I feel like in another 20 years, people will laugh at that. Like, you were laughing at the Aussie stuff, saying it looks like a cartoon. But look at all the CGI on the little Nas X video. You know, like, that, that stuff uh, improves exponentially, you know, every – every couple of years or whatever, that's, it's going to be outdated soon enough and we'll laugh at it and, and uh, I'll shake our heads if there was ever some controversy about it. I mean, I don't mind it. it I'm not offended by it. It's not something I, I, I intend to revisit often. I, I don't know. I feel like I could have been somewhat primed to uh, walk away from that controversy because I, you know, unbeknownst to, to some, I guess, I, uh, I put out a video that, that, very same day. At the same time, uh, the band I, I work with, Satanic Planet, put out its its first video, uh, Baphomet. And there were people who were offended by that for different reasons. Some actually because it was satanic, even though we're, uh, you know, very openly satanic in our, our marketing, our imagery, our name and everything else. There were some people offended by that. But there was a whole crowd offended that uh, we have the drummer, Dave Lombardo, he used to be in Slayer and has this huge following as like the, this, uh, you know, prominent metal drummer and stuff like that. He doesn't do much drumming on this album and in this track. He doesn't do any live drumming at all. He's added atmospherics and electronic bass and stuff like that. Really pisses off some of the metal crowd, you know. And then some people are just really pissed off about your music when it comes out when they had ideas of what it should be. But, you know, or what they think you're trying to do, and they're angry if it doesn't do that. So, you know, we, we got a lot of great response from the video, but I just remembered seeing some of these comments of people pissed off and just thinking, how do you have this much energy to be pissed off about a song we put out? You know, because <laughs> I'm used to being a controversial person speaking about political, religious issues and things like that. And I understand that really cuts to certain people's identities and they're going to get pissed off. So I'm not used to like releasing a piece of art and people being like, man, who the fuck do you, who do you think you are? You know, I knew that was amazing. So at the same time, I've got my video coming out and I'm just mystified by people getting pissed off. People are reaching out to me saying, what do you think of this guy's video? And I'm thinking, why, why are you asking me? Because it has the devil in it? That seems absurd to me, you know? So I do think I was primed, you know, just due to the events around me in my own life 
to say, you know, asking my opinion on somebody else's video is ridiculous. But, you know, that being said, I don't want the controversy either to color my perception of this video. It doesn't elevate it in value to me and it doesn't diminish it either. You know, I watched it. I'm glad I saw it. You know, very well done. Not necessarily my thing, but very well produced, well done. Like, that's it. You know, like my, my opinion isn't better than anybody else's in that regard. Yeah. Well, it's funny if somebody sees the devil on like a piece of toast or, you know, in a photograph and for some reason they just have this inclination to call you. Oh, look, it's the devil. Call Lucian. I'm sure that happens all the time. It's one of those things. But uh, well, before I let you go. the controversy that's already waning, you know. Yeah. Uh, any, um, any legal fights that you guys are speaking of the satanic panic and Christian nationalism and all that. I mean, let's pinball into what are you guys still doing battle with Arkansas, right? <laughs> with Ray, you know, Senator doing, Raper. What are you doing yeah, over there? We're still battling with Arkansas. It's been, it been a long time since there was a ruling in Arkansas. And we are just wondering what, what is going on now, here? It, it, for, I'm sorry, I set you up, but I didn't do a very good job. A ruling on what? Is this still about the Ten Commandments on government property or something right. else? Uh, well, yeah, Arkansas put a Ten Commandments monument on their capital grounds, claiming it served some secular purpose and was just a historical document that speaks to the codification of constitutional law. And because it was privately donated, though privately donated by a senator, um, that it, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, an establishment clause violation because the idea is that any private donor then could donate a monument. So we called that bluff and we offered to uh, donate a satanic monument or Baphomet monument, and they said no, so we're suing. Um, our, we're joining a suit uh, being put forward by also the Freedom From Religion Foundation and the ACLU, and I think maybe another party as well. Um, but th this suit lawsuit has been in, in progress for some time. Uh, the senator who donated the monument, uh, he took a bunch of donations to pay for that monument, uh, well over the monument cost from what we can tell. And I believe it was the Freedom From Religion Foundation that requested the financial uh, information uh, about, the, about the Ten Commandments monument, a, a list of the donors and that kind of thing. Um, the state was refusing to hand that over, at least the senator was. And the only recent ruling we've gotten is I think the judge is now demanding that the information be handed over. Uh, and this is only after like nearly a year of no motion on that case. But another lawsuit we have in action now is we just had, you know, I think under a month now or maybe about a month, we filed lawsuit against Texas um, fighting back against its abortion restrictions. And We've uh, done this with a plaintiff there who uh, was following our abortion ritual guidelines in which when a member of the Satanic Temple is seeking to terminate a pregnancy, uh, we have this kind of ritualized counseling process uh, as a, an effort to help them contextualize their decision as indeed their own decision and to be at peace with it in deference to our tenants and to absolve themselves of the kind of guilt and shame that uh, Texas politicians might try to impose upon them. And we have our own kind of timeline for how this ritual is, is practiced, right? And so to interrupt that process in which actually having the procedure is part with medically unnecessary procedures like an imposed sonogram or waiting period, we make the argument that that's a violation of our religious liberty. And on those grounds, we're, we're fighting these, these Texas standards that call for those kinds of superfluous, medically unnecessary uh, invasive procedures that, um, that just interrupt the process and are constructed to add elements of guilt and shame to the process. So we feel that this is a really difficult case in Texas uh, uh, to be litigated because they've done so much to make religious liberty so much more robust and, uh, and untouchable by any type of government intervention. 
And it's going to be very difficult for them to find a way, I think, to ignore our claims or to turn them down without also ignoring all the precedent they've set, that they've been trying to set for the benefit of Christian nationalists. Anyways, during the Little Nas X controversy, all I could think is my inbox was filling up with media requests about some other guy's fucking video was how few interview requests I got about a lawsuit we're pushing in Texas that Satanists are pushing in Texas that really stands a chance of setting important precedent and kind of recontextualizing religious liberty arguments. So I couldn't help but just thinking, this video is what you're getting outraged about. This video is what's important to you. These shoes are what's frightening you about Satanists right now. And we could hardly get coverage of this lawsuit we were fighting in Texas. And it's just kind of a disappointing commentary, I think, on people's priorities, I guess. And we like bright, shiny things, you know? We yeah. Like, we like, we're easily distracted. And we don't like right. depth. We don't like nuance. We like it simple. We like it clean, black, white. Now black and white, really, you know, good, evil, that kind of thing. Um, and that's the that's sort of the focus of your Patreon article, right? And you've released this free. I, I know it's on Patreon, but this is available to everybody right now. Is that right? At the beginning of the pandemic, uh, I was seeing a lot of people financially hurting. I, I took the risk of opening up my posts for free for everybody it, while putting a disclaimer at the top saying like, look, this is how I'm making my income right now. So if you can't afford to subscribe, please do. It's worked out so far. And uh, even though things are opening up and, and people are generally considering the pandemic over, even though they're quite wrong, um, and people seem to have stabilized generally economically, I'm still running on this system where I'm keeping my Patreon open to everybody, but just asking that if you can afford any any subscription fee, please do it. Okay. Well, I'll put the link to the article. I mean, I, I thought about reading it, but I think I'd rather people go and, and read it themselves. And then if they want to choose to support you, that's uh, that's terrific. Do you have a link, like a YouTube link to the music video that you said it released a couple weeks ago? Is that somewhere online? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can send you that, too. Yeah, and, I'll put uh, that in the description box, because, damn it, Lil Nas X is not the only one who released a video that month. And uh, so I'll give you a, not that you need a signal boost on this end. I will say that I, I will take it as a compliment that you said no to Rolling Stone, but said us yes to us. That makes me, that just fills my heart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Screw you, Rolling Stone. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, you make some salient points. I mean, let's not get distracted. There are people who have done real harm and continue to do real harm uh, in terms of uh, using Satan to weaponize uh, even sometimes what sounds on its surface like worthy causes to harm people and to spread lies and misinformation and to do great damage. And so let's keep our eyes on the prize. I mean, would that be an, a good summation of it, Lucian? Yeah, and I think also if you're wondering what Satanists think of the Little Nas X video, you can't ask me and find out. You're only going to hear what I think about it. And that's part of why I didn't want to do interviews about it. You're going to have to ask every Satanist because I feel like their individual interpretations of it are valid. They might like it. They might might not. But I'm certainly not somebody to sit here and say, this is what Satanists should think about this little Nas X video. We have a diversity of tastes and interests in music and art, and that's the way it should be. We've always embraced that type of diversity. And there's, uh, you know, it would be somewhat anti-Satanic of me to kind of try <laughs> to dictate those tastes to anybody. Lucian Greaves. All right. Links in the description box. And I always enjoyed talking. Thanks for sounding off on this one. Appreciate you. Thank you so much.